Hello guys, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, we've, if you don't remember, we went ahead and found Acro's room. Acro seems to be an acrobat at the circus. Count how many times I say Acro. And Acro's pet monkey, Money, stole our attorney's badge, and we had to go get that back, but we also found this diamond ring, and in this episode... We're heading into court, we're going to be facing off against Von Karma once more, and hopefully today is a bit smoother than the previous uh, case was, but since this is the third case of the game, we know that's probably not going to be true. Good morning, Max. Max? Milk. Milk. What? If I don't have... If I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage, I just can't function, sweetie. S stage Don't worry, there won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. I guess. Nick. Max is really nervous. That's understandable. Hey, my sweeties. What? You don't think I should fly, do you? Huh? You know. You've got to make a good first impression. When I enter the room, I may- Maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. No, 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 no. We can't be having you flying around the courtroom. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. Don't worry, Max. Just do what Nick says and everything will be okay. Oh, sweetie. What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try flying into the courtroom? I can see it now. The dashing young lawyer flying fabulously in from above. One glimpse of that, and everyone in your, the room will be on your side. Max, really? No one needs to fly today. Nick? What's that look in your eyes? I like the sound of that. Dashing young lawyer flying fabulously. <laughs> And now, the case of one- What? Your Honor, get on with it! Oh, sorry, I just realized that the defendant's name is Billy Bob Johns. So... Well, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Y yes, Your Honor. He does often go by that name. You know, my grandchild is a huge fan of his. I think everyone here wouldn't mind if we called the defendant Maximilian Galactica. Your Honor, I understand that. However, I will still refer to him each and every time as Billy Bob Johns. It sounds more... friendly. Does it? Hmm, I wonder if that is... I wonder if that is to our advantage. Miss Von Karma, your opening statement, if you please. I hope you didn't bother thinking you'd... win this fun, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Eh? That spear channeling trial was a sham. I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy. It did not count. Do you hear me? You must still be upset about what happened last time. You have no chance. Zero. Zilch. Nada. I'm not losing this case. Why, you ask? Because it is not the nature of a Von Karma to lose at anything. Every single time we've seen a Von Karma in this series, all they've done is lose. I guess being born with the name Von Karma is a free pass to be arrogant and annoying. Watch and learn, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty you are. M m me Guilty? What are you talking about? It will be my ultimate revenge. Her dad is gone, you know. The prosecution is finished. Let's hurry and wrap up this waste of time. You may call your first witness, Miss Von Karma. Detective G Dick Gumshoe, get up there! Now! Sorry to keep you from work, as I'm sure you need every penny you can earn, Detective. Don't mention it. It's no trouble at all. I've been looking forward to this. Very well. I would like you to begin by shedding light on the offense in question. At your service, sir. Alright, detective. 
You may proceed with your testimony. The night of the crime, snow was falling until 9.40 p.m., making it extremely cold out. All of the circus performers gathered in the big top to practice their routines. The practice session broke up around 10 p.m. The moita itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15 p.m. The victim was found bent over a wooden box as a doorna dead as a doornail. The cause of death was a blunt force trauma that snapped the vertebrae in his neck. I see. He was beaten to death. Here's the autopsy report for the victim. The court accept the court accepts this into evidence. I don't know if it's just because... I don't know... Because I've played more visual novels, but... I'm somehow catching a lot more typos here than I did in the first Ace Attorney, so either the localization for this was really rushed, or just... They're sticking out like a sore thumb to me now for whatever reason. I don't remember there being that many typos in the third game. A blunt object, huh. Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. As always, with Gumshoe, the solution here is to just press everything. Let me ask you about the snow. It was nearly a blizzard up until the time of the crime. Did it pile up? It wasn't such a big deal. Maybe about an inch and a half was on the ground. The snow froze in place and stayed on the ground until the next day. Huh. The snow. Let me see. There's gotta be more to this. Eh? What's the matter, Nick? I need to take a look at the court record. Mr. Gumshoe. What were you... Huh. That's weird. I've never seen Gumshoe referred to as Mr. Gumshoe before, usually he's referred to as Detective Gumshoe. What were the members of the circus doing on the night of the crime? Although the circus performers gathering at the Big Top to practice their routines. When you say all of the circus performers, who do you mean? Everyone but the dancers and staff were there. Regina the Animal Tamer, Moe the Clown, Ben the Ventriloquist, and of course, the defendant, Maximilian Galactica, and his and the victim, the Ringmaster. Oh, I almost forgot. Regent the Tiger was there as, was there as well. Out of curiosity, what about the circus monkey? When I was investigating yesterday, he happened to snatch my wristwatch. Detective, you are welcome to file a police report after these proceedings. So the very cheap, fake-looking wristwatch was, uh... Gum shoes up there. The practice session broke up around 10 p.m. After the practice was over, where did everyone head off to? Regina was played with Regent, while Mo went back to his room tired from work. Ben the ventriloquist went to the front gate absorbed in his own world. The ringmaster and Max went to the ringmaster's room to talk privately. Talk privately, huh? That's awfully suspicious. You wouldn't happen to know what they were talking about, would you? It seems they were negotiating Max's salary. Actually, Max was asking for Regina's hand in marriage. Demoida itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15pm. I'd like you to be a bit more specific about the events at 10.15pm. Uh, um, okay. Not a problem, pal. We got a witness that told us the whole thing went down. Ugh! This is totally meaningless. Time to move on. Huh. Alright. We'll just have to revisit that testimony later. Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling us how the victim met his end? The victim was found bent over a wooden box that is a doornail. A wooden box? That's right. The victim must have been carrying the wooden box when he was killed. Carrying the box, huh? It was a rather strange wooden box, Your Honor. 
What do you mean? Well, it was much heavier than it looked. Not to mention it was locked. Locked, you say? This may be my only chance, so I might as well ask some questions. Let's ask about the contents. Do you mind telling us what was inside that box? Well, when we found the box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. So we took it back to the station and cracked it open. All there was inside was this little bottle. Bottle? What is that, Detective? Exactly what it looks like, Your Honor. It's a condiment bottle. What's inside the bottle? It's filled with pepper. Pepper? Why in the world was it locked in that big box? There's only one little bottle in that huge box? I wonder if it has some sort of special meaning. To cause a death was blunt force drama that snapped a vertebrae in his neck. Well, there wasn't much that we could go after Gumshoe with this time. He gave us the facts as he saw them, but there's gotta be more to this. <clears throat> I didn't see anything, but that's why you're the lawyer and I'm the medium. According to the autopsy report, the murder weapon was a blunt object, correct? You've done your homework, pal. And you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? The police are searching for it as we speak. My theory was that it was something the perpetrator ran off with. You would think so, especially since you didn't find it on the scene. No, 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 I bet he made it disappear with magic. Ho, 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 ho. Well, I think we have a good feel for the details of the event now. I guess that's all we're gonna get out of Gumshoe this case. You mean all we're gonna get out of him is that little bottle of pepper? Now that we have wrapped up with the detective, I would like to call my next witness. Yeah? I'm not even off the stand yet. Obviously, but that's due to you being slow and unable to take a hint. Uh, I don't know, but wrapped up is such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy. Thank you very much, Detective Gumshoe. You may step down. Miss Von Karma, call your next witness. I would like to call Mr. Benjamin Woodman to the stand. She must be talking about Ben the Ventriloquist. I wonder if Trilo will show up on the stand as well. You know it. Please state your name and occupation for the record. My, my full name is Triloquist. I'm employed as an opera tenor. Uh, excuse me. The witness called to the stand was one Mr. Benjamin Woodman, Ventriloquist. That robe must be cutting off your circulation. I said that I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine, I'll grace you with a song. Ahem. <laughs> me, 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 me. The world of the law. Exciting and daring. Guilt or innocence. Decided by a judge dressed up like a woman. Well, what do you think? It had a good rhythm. I have absolutely no rhythm, so... Any sort of... Goodness that the song might have had... Completely out the window. It's just the lyrics. They leave something to be desired, so to speak. Trillo, you know better than to insult a judge. Shut up! Just look at your nose. You would think you'd have the sense to fix it. It's so ugly I want to punch you in the face. On the off chance the swelling would help. It, you know that your nose is a reason you'll never be an A-list star. Celebrities must really enjoy saying everything that flashes into their minds. What's going on here? Order! Order! I demand to know who the witness is. D don't worry about me, sir. I'll let Trillo handle this. I'm not worried about you one bit. I'm worried about getting testimony in my co- Ow! You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this fitness. Now let's proceed. One, once practice was over, I, I left the tent with the stooge. I mean, clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went over to the plaza. That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. You saw Maximilian Galactica heading towards the scene. You're sure of that? Without a doubt. 
he had on his silk hat, cloak, and the dumb white roses on his chest. How can you mistake someone with a crazy get-up and his nose stuck up so high? Uh, that's enough. I think we all get the picture. Just one thing. You said you ditched the clown. That's right, dress boy. Well, since you weren't with him, couldn't that mean that the clown committed the crime? Huh, he's got a point. What a shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the criminal. Why is that? He is absolute proof. A... a silk hat. This was found on the scene of the crime. It belongs to the defendant. Ah. Without Christian, he was wearing his signature hat during the performance. If the clown was the murderer, there would be no reason for his hat to be at the scene. Hmm. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Your prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. Well done. Thank you for stating the obvious, Mr. F Mr. Phoenix Wright. What do you have to say? Uh, okay. I guess she's the boss again today. And we're going to have to leave cross-examining this guy for the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!